what you're looking at now is the world's smallest computer. Um, what you see here is HDMI on one end and USB on the other end. USB is used for power or connecting it to an existing computer. And here you'll see the micro SD port and the, the micro USB port. The micro USB port is used for connecting peripherals to your computer, USB peripherals. And on this side you'll see a button, it's a Bluetooth button to initiate Bluetooth connectivity. And if you move over here, you'll see it running Android 2.3. And I'll start up the killer application, Angry Birds. And on, on the inside of this, we are running a dual Cortex A9 at 1.2 gigahertz and a Mali 400 quad core. So it's one of the more powerful application processors available on the market today, meaning it's in the higher end if you compare it to smartphones. And as you'll see when we see the content here, it's really smooth and this is Angry Birds. As, as you would expect it to be on a normal phone as well, this is HD content. So if so if we move out, we can watch Toy Story 3, the official trailer. It's 1080p being rendered from this small, tiny device. The, vid the video you're seeing now is actually on the micro SD card itself. And here you see it rendered on the, the big screen. And what you see here is just to be able to connect uh, mouse and keyboard will to demonstrate the connectivity we have with the micro USB port. You can also connect Bluetooth mouse and keyboard to it as well as using your smartphone with an application called Mobile Mouse Pro. Using your, then you will use your smartphone as the mouse and keyboard to, uh, over Wi-Fi. And if you see here one of our partners has it's called Polcast, and what they have developed is a way of sharing your personal content on all your devices. What you do is you install a server on your PC or a Mac, and then you install clients on your smartphone on this device, and then you will be able to share your pictures, your videos, your music and documents and everything between all devices. So if you are out walking and you take a picture with your smartphone, it will be instantly available on the device connected to a big screen for instance so you, or you can be on a business travel and you want your main office to see something that you have taken a picture or, or doing a video they can just connect the device to a big screen and then they'll see what you're trying to talk about and they will get the visual idea straight away no waiting and This is the other device. It's running Ubuntu, and on top of it, we have an ARM dem tech demo. It's a game. It's called True Force. So what you see now is rendered real time using the ARM Mali graphics processor. The reason why it says replay mode is that somebody recorded the inputs they used with the PlayStation 3 uh, gamepad. So it's rendered real-time using the inputs that's recorded. And what you don't see here is the other uniqueness we have, the USB port. We can plug it into a computer. What we'll get then is a uh, computer will think it's a memory device, a mass storage device, like, like a normal memory stick. And you'll see a drive popping up. On that drive there will be software for Windows, OS X and Linux that will enable, it's a thin client and what it does is that once this is started on, on the computer this device will start streaming audio and video to the computer the, the thin client will display this on the big screen you have on your computer 
and it will take the keyboard and mouse from the computer and send the inputs back to the device. So everything you do and all your data is still on the tiny device, but it's being displayed on the host computer. So you're snitching from the host computer. So when you take the device out of the computer, there's no residual data being stored on the computer. There's only the images and the audio that has been rendered previously that's in the memory for a short period of time. And on this device, we have a ho unique hardware ID. So we are able to uniquely identify every device, saying that it's our device, we produce this. It's not somebody else copying the device. So we are able to build the security aspect as well. And in some companies and in some contexts, that's a requirement.